just to get my cravings out of the way because a lot of people think that I don't have cravings. That's just not true. I love sugar too. Let me just, let me just tell you right here. I love sugar too. A lot of people say, oh, you have good discipline. I have no discipline. I just know what I have to do. Welcome back to six holistic treatment part one. First one that we're going to talk about is your diabetic diet. What should you eat? What should you not eat? When should you not eat? When should you eat? And many other factors. Now, first one is we're going to talk about water, protein, sugar, fat, fasting, and detoxing. These are the components of the diet. First one, we're going to talk about water. We can do a whole video and more about the, about the water because water is, is essential. Why 70% of your body is water. So it's very essential that you get your water correctly. Now, this is just basic information right now. And as we do more videos, I'm going to go into more detail how to do this uh, properly because hydration is very important uh, for your uh, diabetic conditions. So uh, first you need to super hydrate. There's no question. You need to drink a lot of water. Why? Because you get dehydrated because you have a lot of sugar in your system and they tend to clog up together. They, they tend to, you know, have the, remember the syndrome X, they need to create all kinds of blood pressure problem, they, cholesterol problem, they cause a lot of problems. So you need to kind of dilute out your sugar in your body so you need to hydrate how do you hydrate half of your body weight in fluid ounce per day i weigh 160 divided by two it's 80 fluid ounce which is about four bottles of water uh, each bottle 16.9 fluid ounce so about four bottles of water i need to drink i i make sure i drink that that much fluid every day or more if i could especially if i'm doing sports and other things i need to drink more so super hydrating we call it, is very essential to improve your hydration of your body. Next thing I use is juicing. Well, I don't like water. I know some of you love water. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like drink it. I have problem doing it. So I had to find other ways. I drink either tea or I drink a lot of juicing. So I have green juice, which I'm gonna tell you all the components on my late, uh, later videos, uh, green uh, uh, juicing, and I have root vegetable juicing, which is another excellent uh, juice as well. I juice that. Uh, every day. I, ju I juice a lot on the weekends because during the week I have to work and I don't want to run to the bathroom every half an hour. So I, I, I hydrate just to make sure that I get my, you know, half of my uh, body weight and fluid ounce, fluid ounce per day. But uh, with my weekends, I can really super hydrate because I'm, I'm near the bathroom all the time. So I'm going like crazy. I'm, I'm juicing and as much as I can. It's for, so it's very important that you super hydrate. And Another very important thing is when not to drink. Uh, a lot of people, I watch people drink, uh, eat all the time in the restaurant. I'm always peeking over, see what they're, and I'm trying to figure out what kind of diseases they have. They're eating this junk food. What can they help? You know, you know. Uh, unfortunately, that's just, you know, m my thing, and I, I shouldn't, but I, I can't help it. Every overweight person that I see are drinking some kind of fluid during the meal. They keep saying, "Oh, another uh, uh, iced tea." Another iced tea, I've seen people drink five, six iced tea during the meal. Now, that person is very overweight, I'm gonna tell you, okay? So you cannot drink during your meal. You cannot drink at least two hours before you go to bed. A lot of people drink a lot before you go to sleep. What happened? Then you have to go to the bathroom and that disrupts your you know, whole sleep thing and that makes you stressed out and then that makes you gain weight. So it's very important. When to drink is important, but when not to drink is just as important. Next one is protein. Every time I eat protein, I have a lot of salad with it. Why? Because if I eat too much protein, I'm Korean, we love Korean barbecue. We have a lot of barbecue. When that happens, what happens is that if you have enough of the protein, after that, the protein turns into sugar. So a lot of people think that, oh, I'm, I'm on ketogenic, I don't, I don't eat any you know, sugar at all, but guess what? If you eat a lot of protein, when protein's done with, with all the amount that it needs, then guess what? It, it gives it to your you know, sugar, it turns into sugar. So you have to be careful with that as well. But I always eat and fat and sugar. If I have to eat some sugar, I eat it with a lot of salad, a lot of other meat product, like especially fat, to kind of tone down the effect of the sugar as well. So I eat a lot of vegetable. My rule is 80-20. I'm gonna go into a little more detail later on. A lot of vegetables, maybe another plate of it, and then, and then other things, whether it's protein or fat or other things even a little bit of sugar, but I, I make sure that it's, it's a lot of salad with every meal. And why? Because those are prebiotic food, right? This is what your good bacteria eat. Your good bacteria is vegetarian. 
They don't like meat. They don't like all the other things. Well, we like it, so we have to eat it. But I, I really encourage you to, to get a lot more salad. Why? It, it's a food for your good bacteria. Because remember, with, without good bacteria, your body cannot digest food and package it into your liver. And liver becomes fatty liver because it's not getting all the good stuff and getting all the junk food. It's not packaged properly, so you, your liver gets to store it. So fatty liver is a big problem, and you need to help it by having a lot of good bacteria and by having more greens and then fermented foods. I'm Korean. I eat a lot of kimchi, so it really saves me from it. A lot of people don't have access to a lot of fermented food. I absolutely, absolutely recommend you uh, watch some YouTube channel, how to ferment your own food. It's very simple to do. I don't have to do it because kimchi is already there. Every night I'm eating kimchi. But I highly recommend find some fermented food that works for you and you have to do this daily. It's a very important thing. And then I do a lot of protein shake. I'm going to tell you exactly what I put in. I put uh, another seven different uh, herbs that are in the, <laughs> also added to the protein shake just to make sure I get enough of, of nutrients. But you need to have some good protein shake because a lot of people don't eat enough good protein. Uh, usually vegetable protein like pea protein is probably the most excellent one you can do. And I use collagen and vitamin C to rebuild my body, my skin, my covering up, my nails, hair, everything is made of collagen. Without good collagen, your body cannot regenerate and heal from your diabetic ulcer. Let me repeat that. A lot of people not healing the ulcer, you don't have materials to rebuild your skin and soft tissue, all of that inside, and it's all made from collagen. So it's very important for you to supplement collagen. You can take pills, or for me, I, I put it on my uh, protein shake, which I take two every day, so that I'm getting plenty of collagen to make your skin better and, and make you feel better inside, and it's a very important thing you have to do. We're about halfway through my six holistic treatments for healing diabetic foot ulcers. If you've enjoyed this video so far or learned something new, leave the words holistic cure in the comments below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Obviously, uh, I don't need any visible sugar, no grains or anything during the week. Uh, I have to eat rice with my meal at nighttime. I use what we call a GABA rice, G-A-B-A -A, GABA rice. This Korean scientist somehow made a way to makes uh, a rice that it's not, it, it tastes just like rice, but it doesn't raise your sugar. So that's what I eat. It's my secret. And then no artificial sugar, no uh, nothing. Remember my cheat day, I cheat uh, once a week. On Saturday, I can have some you know, pizza, I can have some hamburgers, and I can, I can have some cake. I don't eat a lot of cake, but I have some of that. Because just to get my cravings out of the way, because a lot of people think that I don't have cravings, that's just not true. I love sugar too. Let me just, let me just tell you right here, I love sugar too. A lot of people say, oh, you have good discipline. I have no discipline. I just know what I have to do. It's my, I call it my block time. Saturday, you enjoy. Rest of the time, don't do it, you know? And then, um, and these are my cheat days. Now, you can start with two, three days of cheat days in the beginning, because maybe every other day, and then you get it down to maybe twice a week, and then maybe once a week. I highly recommend because you cannot be healthy without handling your craving. Why? Because you're going to go right back. Okay, it's very important for you to be okay. Don't be uh, guilty about it. Once, once the guilt comes out, guess what? It's a stress for you because you, you feel guilty and that's going to cause more cortisol to, co cortisol to come out and that's going to increase your blood sugar level as well. So it's very important. Next one is the fat. Um, I also, don't forget, remember I told you about the fruit? You have to really reduce the amount of food. Maybe a one fistful of fruit per day at the most, okay? And then uh, grains. Grains you have to be really careful, especially wheat product. Any wheat product, any bread is really bad for you. Why? It's got gluten. Gluten, all the studies done lately, it's, you know, I've known about gluten for over, problem with gluten for about 20 years, but now lately saying, a lot of claims saying that it's 100% of people have allergic reaction to gluten of some kind. So it's very important to reduce the grain, especially your bread, wheat bread especially. Well, it's fake anyways, okay? <laughs> but you, you want to stop that. And then the fat, uh, the, I eat all of this every day, especially bone broth soup. Remember bone broth soup? All the minerals and collagen comes out. It's very important. You can supplement. But I also, we do a lot of bone broth soup in Korean culture. So I eat at least three times a week a bone broth soup. It's very important if you can get some. And then avocado, avocado a day keeps the doctor away. I know apple, uh, apple keeps your doctor away too because of the pectin, the, the, the fermented 
it's a covering of the apple that makes more, you know, probiotics grow nicely. That's what they found out. But also avocado is amazing. Uh, potassium and it's got uh, a great like oil in there. It's, it's the most amazing fruit there is avocado. Highly recommend. Fasting. I fast uh, all the time. Well, lately I haven't because I lost some weight and I, I did some I did some detoxing uh, with my wife about uh, two months ago. I lost 20 pounds. I didn't want to lose that much, but it was such a good program that I lost about 20. And since then, I don't have to do as much detoxing because I want to gain some weight back. But intermittent fasting is daily. And we're going to go over this in more detail on other videos. But you have a feeding window uh, less than 12 hours, maybe down to six to four hours, meaning breakfast to dinner time, the window becomes narrower and narrower. More you do that, you're able to handle the sugar better. I don't want you to do it right away. It has, it's a process, but intermittent fasting is a very powerful way to improve your blood sugar level. And the monthly, I recommend uh, one weekend a month, you just fast, but, but you have to kind of get to it. This is more advanced level of be able to control it well enough where your body is used to handling. Just like my cheat day. If I eat a lot of stuff on the cheat days, Guess what? My blood sugar doesn't go up that high because you're so trained that way that your body knows how to handle it. Also quarterly, every quarter, every seasonal change, I recommend uh, five to 10 days of just detoxing. I recommend water detox, which is another program that, I'm, that we're going to uh, introduce to you. It's a very advanced technique to get, get all the water into every cell in your body and then detoxing all of that in about two to three days. It's an amazing program that I'm going to introduce you later on, so stay tuned on that. Detoxing, we talked a lot about detoxing already, water detox, green detox every day, and then decluttering. We're gonna talk this, talk more about this later on. You have to clean your environment. When, you clean, when your environment is messy, I, I clean my, every day I clean my desk every day before I go to sleep, because without that, I can't go to sleep. It's just a habit that I created. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like all the junk is out of the way. Also forgiving. We're going to do the forgiving exercise later on in other videos. You have to forgive, let go of all this resentment and, and, and hate and all of those. We get that because some of, the, some of our friends and family members are not very sensitive to your needs and they may say something that's not nice, but you need to forgive every day. It has to be done every day. Without that, you become stressed. Remember the stress. You can gain more weight. You, you, you're going to make your diabetes worse. So I highly recommend to forgive every night. We're going to show you how to do that in my other videos. Be sure to like this video if you found it interesting or learned something new. If you think someone else will enjoy it, be sure to send it to them. Stay tuned for my next video in my Diabetic Foot Also series part two of six holistic treatment coming out next Sunday. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels including Instagram and Facebook to stay updated on everything happening on my channel. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.